Hello and welcome to PC Retro Tech. So in today's video we're going to be looking at the full capabilities of the IBM Color Graphics Adapter. So that's the CGA card. So you might remember that IBM is a serious business minded company and so a lot of their users were buying IBM PCs with a monochrome display adapter. So this was a black and white card which had no graphics modes whatsoever on it. It was just a text mode card. Of course you could hook it up to an amber screen and get amber and black but otherwise it was black and white. A little bit later there was a Hercules graphics adapter and that had a black and white text but it also had graphics modes so black and white graphics. Uh, but this is the CGA card which was made by IBM in 1981 and it offered their users an option of four color graphics modes. So it's a bit limited because of a combination of the chipset. This is the 6845 chipset, uh, originally made by Motorola, but this is a Hitachi because it's a later model card, and 16 kilobytes of video memory. And so this limited you to a resolution of 320 by 200 and four colors. Or you could go back to black and white and you could have a resolution of 640 by 200. And of course you could do text mode as well. In fact, text on this card allowed 16 color text in either 40 or 80 color mode. So for graphics there were a few different palettes available but they all had just four colors. So you could have uh, cyan, red, white and black. Or you could have cyan, magenta, white and black or you could have green, red, yellow and black uh, and there were sort of light and dark versions of each of those but at any one time you only had four colors on the screen so a lot of early games, a lot of CJ games uh, used these four color graphics modes but in today's video we're going to be looking at how to get 16 colors out of this card in graphics modes so the card itself is an 8-bit ISA card, so it was obviously designed to be compatible with the IBM PC and any clones. And it has a light pen connector, so you could get a pen that would enable you to draw graphics on the screen. Uh, there's also a composite video connector, a composite video output. And of course, you can tell it's a CGA card because of the 9-pin uh, CGA connector here. Um, this looks a lot like a VGA connector, but those had three rows of pins, whereas this only has two rows with nine pins. In fact, you could use a nine pin serial cable to connect this to your CGA monitor. So there were a few different kinds of CGA graphics cards that came out from IBM. In fact, there were seven different models. Um, they were basically broken down into two different kinds. There were early CGA and late CGA cards. So this will be relevant today because the late CGA cards had a much nicer looking 16 color graphics. Um, the early CGA cards, all of the 16 colors are very close together, but in the later cards, uh, at least people say that they look better because they're more diverse. Uh, so to tell whether you've got a late model or an early model card is very easy. Uh, all you have to do is count the number of resistors on the card. So on my card there's one here, four here, four here, three and three. And this makes a total of 15. And any card that has 15 resistors on it is a late model CGA card. And otherwise you have an early model. Of course, you can also just look up the model numbers. This is a model 1501981, which is late. Uh, but if your model number starts with a 180, you've got an early card. And the only other early model card is the 1501486. So this is the cyan magenta black and white palette. And you can see it's pretty gaudy looking. Uh, there isn't much you can do about it either. You can see that they've done some dithering on the mountains there. They're magenta and black alternating pixels. And there's also some dithering on the dash and the steering wheel with blue and black and blue and magenta. But that's about all you could do to make it look better. Otherwise you are left with a pretty limited graphical experience. So 
So this is an example of the red, white, black and blue palette in this Grand Prix Circuit game. And you can see basically all the same tricks are used in order to make it more interesting to look at. There's dithering and there's, you know, very carefully drawn graphics uh, which make it look interesting, but otherwise it's still a very bland graphical experience. So this is a zoom of a game that uses the red, orange, green and black palette. But something looks a little bit different here, and that's because instead of using black for the background colour, they've chosen blue. Uh, so it turns out in these CJ graphics cards, you can choose the background colour to be any of the 16 colours that the graphics card supports. Of course, you still just have four colours, three foreground and one background colour. But you'll notice that the dithering in the foreground, and this little guy who's playing golf here, uh, looks like he has orange arms, red shirt, green and blue top on, purple pants, uh, red hat, and there's uh, you know green on the, the grass. It looks like there's many more than just the four colors, but this is just because of very cle clever dithering and the use of a background color. So what you're looking at now appears to be a 16 color CGI graphic. Uh, but this is a little bit misleading. In fact, what I'm doing is using a text mode here. So, what I didn't tell you earlier is that although the text modes are 16 colors, you can also set the size of the characters that you're displaying. So, if you can set that size to a very small size, uh, the characters will look like the little dots on the screen. Now, the disadvantage of that is that you only get a resolution of 160 by 100 on the screen at most and this is half in each direction compared with the CGA color graphics mode. Uh, so you've lost a factor of four overall, twice in the horizontal and twice in the vertical direction, but you've only gained a factor of two in the color information because you've gone from four colors to 16 colors or from two bits to four bits per pixel. So you've lost overall a factor of two somewhere. So this is really a cheat so, by the way, I didn't draw this graphic, I found this online, and unfortunately I didn't have a program, or I couldn't find a program anywhere to actually display this graphic, and I really wanted to see what it looked like. I had no idea what it was, so I actually wrote a program for loading uh, a graphic like this off the disk, and turning it into a text mode graphic, and displaying it on the screen. Uh, so I wrote that in C and assembly language. So the question still remains though, how do we get proper graphics modes with 16 colors on the CGA adapter? And the answer turns out to be in something I told you earlier, and that is the connectors on the CGA cards. There are actually two connectors there. There's the ordinary RGB connector for a CGA monitor, which I'm using here, the 9-pin adapter. And then there's the other RCA output, which is for composite video. So what I'm going to do next is replace this RGB monitor with a composite monitor and I'm going to plug in a composite cable. So that CGA RGB monitor is gone and I've replaced it with this Commodore 1084S monitor. So this is actually a monitor that was very popular for Commodore 64 users uh, for playing games on. One of the disadvantages of composite monitors like this is that the text display is not very clear. So when you have text on the screen it can often be quite blurry and hard to read compared to a, a normal RGB monitor. Uh, but we're going to use this here today to check what the composite output of the CGA card looks like and see if we can get 16 colors to display on this monitor. So this is what the composite output looks like. Uh, with an ordinary CGA game, this is one that we saw earlier that was in four colors, now it's actually just in grayscale. And so it looks like we've gone backwards actually, but it turns out we have to do something a little bit different if we want to get 16 colors. Just running ordinary CGA games is not going to do the trick. Uh, we need to run some games that were actually designed for color composite output. So let's have a go at doing that. So this is the game Jungle Hunt, uh, which is actually designed for 320 by 200 16 color composite mode. But as you can see, I'm only getting a black and white image here. 
And this has to do with where I'm actually living. So, in Europe, we have a completely different television standard called PAL compared to the North American NTSC standard. So, colors were encoded slightly differently, and of course, the resolutions were also a bit different as well. Uh, so, this PAL monitor can understand the picture information, but it can't understand the color information of an NTSC signal. And so we need to find a way of displaying NTSC uh, images on this PAL monitor. So in fact all of the IBM CGA graphics adapters were NTSC as far as I can see. There were no PAL ones made. Uh, so what I'm going to do is use a converter to convert between the two video standards. So this is the little PAL to NTSC and NTSC to PAL converter that I bought. I just found it on eBay, I don't know what brand this is. Uh, but uh, it's a cheap uh, import from China. It uh, really was very inexpensive. So you can either run it off USB uh, or off mains power. This is the European mains adapter. And this should also work in Australia as well if you can get these in Australia. Uh, because they use the PAL standard in Australia. So uh, this uh, yellow connector here is where the composite video needs to be plugged in. It's a little bit misleading because the output on the card itself is red, uh, but these are, as far as I know, uh, for audio, and the yellow one is for the video. And the same for the output. You want to plug the output of this into uh, the yellow and plug that into your monitor. And then there's a little switch on the side here, which switches from PAL uh, and NTSC. So this is the output. So if you want to output to a PAL monitor, you should select the PAL setting. And so that's what I've done here. So let's connect this up and see what difference it makes to the composite output from our IBM Color Graphics adapter. So this starts to look a lot more promising. This Jungle Hunt game has come up like this after putting on the converter. And yeah, in fact, it's actually displaying 16 colors here. So of course, we haven't got any more screen memory. And this is a 320 by 200 16 color mode. So how is this actually done? Well, it turns out that uh, the way they did it was to take each pair of pixels. So that's a total of four bits. Uh, if you take two pixels, uh, which gives you 16 colors, and then use each pair of pixels to give a color. Uh, now, of course, that halves uh, the amount of pixels that you're going to see, but then they just double the number of pixels again. And as you can see, this looks uh, very realistic uh, compared to, especially compared to that 160 by 100 mode that we saw earlier, and certainly a lot more pleasant to look at than the four color uh, CGI that we saw at the beginning. So I had a little bit of a problem with uh, this particular machine and when I first plugged the adapter in and switched it on I thought it wasn't working, I was just getting black and white. But it turns out that there's actually an adjustment that you need to make, uh, at least on some of these machines, uh, in order to get it to work. And unfortunately in my machine the adjustment knob was actually broken. Uh, so let me show you that. So this is inside the IBM PC5150 and if you go back past the floppy drive here and look down right near the power connector there there's a little round circular thing with a screwdriver slot in it. That connector there is actually a little trim pot which adjusts the frequency for the graphics card. Uh, it took me ages to find this online, uh, but that little trim pot changes the way the colors are displayed. And it turns out that for some monitors, and uh, obviously some adapters, unless that's set correctly, you'll still see black and white. So you have to twiddle that around a little bit until you get uh, color on your monitor. Now, the really weird thing about this is that it's not on the graphics card. The graphics card is plugged in right over on the end here. That's the CGA graphics card which we saw earlier, and that pod is not on the graphics card, it's on the main board for the computer itself. It's that little white circle with the blue screwdriver slot in it. So if you just load an ordinary four color CGA game, uh, this is what it'll look like. The colors will all be wrong, and of course the text is really hard to read. 
the reason for this is it's just picking pairs of pixels and trying to assign colors to them and those haven't been chosen by the game designers to look very good. So this is the driving mode and you can see it really looks quite terrible. Uh, it's all very green and dark and you prefer to play this game in the original four color CGA mode than to play it like this. Uh, also the text is unreadable, you can't read anything on the dashboard there. Uh, so this underlines the fact that you really need games that were written for composite mode. And so there were two types of games of course, there were ones that were 320 by 200 with four colors and there were ones that were 640 by 200 with two colors uh, but in both cases the composite the output will display 16 colors if it's been designed correctly so in the four color case it would just take two pixels at a time and in the two color case it would just take four pixels at a time uh, so let's have a look at an example of a game that was designed to work with the 640 by 200 mode in composite color so this is Zaxxon or Super Zaxxon which is a composite color version of the game and the colors here are really quite stunning compared to some of the early ones that we saw so this uses the 640 by 200 mode and I'm just trying to see if I can count 16 colors here there's obviously green, blue, pink, orange, white, black um, there's some browns, there's yellows uh, yeah I don't know how many colors exactly there are there's a light blue color uh, so yeah, I think they really have 16 colors here, and it's very clear on this monitor uh, Especially compared to the first game that we looked at, the Jungle Hunt So I don't want to spoil too many of these games because it'll take away the fun for people who want to try these all out themselves But this is another 640 by 200 one, and it's a very famous game called Bruce Lee And again, the coloring is really clear here uh, compared to what we saw earlier in the other examples. Uh, so it seems like the really early games uh, didn't do a very good job of this composite output, but later on they started to really get the colouring and uh, effects right. Uh, so I'm going to leave it there for today. Um, thanks for watching, and if you like this sort of content, then uh, please think about subscribing to the channel, and uh, maybe leave a comment below. If you like the video, uh, then you know what to do, and uh, we'll see you in a later video. Bye!